Hey everyone, this is Connor with the Aerospace Engineering Fellows. Today I'm going to be covering the cut condition for exam 2 uh, for ACN 3111. And um, I think that's all I need for the intro. Let's get into it. So we're going to be covering what the, conduct, what the cut condition means and why we use it. All right, so we usually use the kind of condition in the context of complex potential flows, right? So whenever we have something where we're trying to model the flow over some irregular aerodynamic body, we usually do that by putting a lot of smaller or at least simpler flows together, right? So we'll take, you know, a source, this is spelled incorrectly, a source, a sink, vortex, uniform flow, mix and match these, varying strengths, whatnot, put them all together, and you can get something like this going on, right? So as an example, I have something like that, uh, where essentially when we, we want something similar to this diagram, uh, we can model that with a vortex sheet and a free stream, right? And I've specified the vortex sheet is of strength lowercase gamma of S, where S is like our, our curve that we're defining as the boundary of the airfoil, right? So when we set up these, um, when we put these flows together, we have to establish boundary conditions, right? These boundary conditions are kind of like the, the um, you know, this is what allows us to solve for like the plus C of these problems, right? Whenever you do an indefinite integral, you know, something, you know, dx and you get a plus C, maybe you need some initial condition to solve for that C, right? For us, this is a boundary condition. It gives us a unique solution to give us, um, to let us analyze this flow. It gives us a unique flow, right? So... These boundary conditions are, for us, no penetration, and flow must leave upper and lower surfaces smoothly. Okay, so let's talk about no penetration first. No penetration basically just means that whatever velocity component, right? So we, when we put these flows together, we get some velocity field, right? That's, you know, air moving over the airfoil, right? We have a similar, we have kind of, that's kind of what we have drawn up here. We've drawn the streamlines. No penetration means is that at any point adjacent to the, um, you know, at any point along this curve S, there can be no component of velocity that is normal to S. Because this implies that you have some flow moving over our body, and then it just goes into our airfoil, right? That's not allowed. We're, we're saying, we're dictating that that is not allowed, all right? And what this shows up as is, you know, our velocity field is um, tangent to our flow, you know, everywhere. Good Lord. Everywhere along our airfoil, our curve S, right? So we have something like this, something like this, something like this, right? So the next condition, right? So that's one of our conditions. The next condition is the flow must leave the upper and lower surfaces smoothly, right? And I'll tell you, well, we can we can draw a little picture and show why this is important, right? So if you imagine, we'll look at our trailing edge a little closely here. If you imagine we had flow, you know, it was satisfying our no penetration condition, right? And it was moving off the edge. And then you had something like these are, this is kind of like our option. We can have something like this, right? Where we have the flow wrap around. Um, and there's no, it's not violating, violating anything right here. And, you know, if we have vortices kind of surrounding, um, you know, our, our airfoil, it's not, it's not impossible to imagine that we could end up with a flow that kind of, wants to wrap around like this. That's how we've made our problem. But what this implies, and I apologize, I'm going to get a little wishy-washy here, but what this implies, this little bit right here, implies um, the flow completely reverses direction right here, right? And it does it such that it implies there's infinite shear, right? Which is physically not allowed. Right? We don't, that's, that's not something that's physically possible. It's not possible for us to reverse the flow like that. You know, it's going one direction and then it turns around, right? It's just essentially what happened here. And the way we've made this potential flows, 
you know, allowed for that to happen. So we set another boundary condition. We set a condition for point A right here, which says that the flow, let's see, let's draw, let's draw another picture. Draw our trailing edge again. Right, so at point A, what we say is that we must have smooth flow, right? Can't be wrapping around, oops, can't be wrapping around. It leaves smoothly, right? So we have our V lower and our V upper. These are these are more like streamlines. We can actually be a little more specific here if we draw our trailing edge again. We have, you know, some V vector here. And some v vector here. At point, we'll say these are at, these are point A. These are all the same point. V u, v l for v upper and v lower. All right. And these must leave smoothly. That lets our model be a physical model. All right? The cut a condition is kind of like one step forward from this, which basically says, and I'm going to skip some of the math here, which ba but it basically says that if this is true, right? If this is true then the vortex strength at point A, so we have some gamma evaluated at A, right? This must equal V upper minus V lower, and that must be equal to zero. This is the cut of condition, all right? And Okay, that's fine. It's fine. Basically what this means is that your velocities should agree. You shouldn't have some unreal, unrealistic velocity uh, field at the end of your airfoil. And, um, you know, you can also, you can also interpret this as um, gamma trailing edge is a little more specific. TE for trailing edge, All right? And we have our upper and lower velocity, and this is equal to that, all right? So hopefully that makes sense. I'll just go, we'll walk through it again. So basically what we're saying is that we have these boundary conditions which help us solve for a unique flow, right? The uniqueness is, you know, akin to solving for that plus C, right? There's, you know, there's like this ambiguity about, you know, the flow we solve for when we just put a bunch of vortices together with a free stream, right? And so when we put those together, we have to set some boundaries so that we can solve for the right, the right flows, the right elementary flows that create something like this that we can analyze, right? We do that by setting a no penetration condition and the cut condition, all right? If you have any questions, we'd love to see you in office hours. Those are on Tuesdays and Thursdays from 5 to 6. We have our schedule up on our website. That's uh, You can Google CU um, Engineering Fellows. You should find us. You should find the aerospace schedule. Um, any questions, we'd love to hear about it. We'd love to hear about anything else going on with your life. Um, but until then, until the next video, uh, this has been Connor.